Lord. Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to Daybreak. Every morning is a wonderful gift to all of us from God Almighty. We ought to thank Him. So, let's clap our hands and tap our feet and join the choir in praising and thanking God, our mighty Savior. worship has brought you closer to heavenly experience and you are ready for more spiritual nourishment. So sharpen your ears and be prepared for the word for your soul. A young pilot knew at his work was flying the plane. And as he was flying the plane, it got caught up into a turbulence 
an area where the pressure was very low. Since the man was new at his work and because of his inexperience, as the pilot tried to control the plane, a lot of fear and panic filled his heart. He was constantly able to hear a lot of voices coming from the control tower. But because of his anxiety and tension, he was not able to give heed to those instructions. And he felt that a disaster was going to happen. And as he was going through this struggle, a very stern and a strong voice came from the control tower, which spoke to the young pilot and told him, Young man, I want you to listen to me. And the young pilot began to give heed to that strong voice. And the voice continued and said, I am the chief of the traffic control. And I've got to tell you this, young man, if you are willing to listen to me, take care of my instructions, then I will take care of your obstructions. The story goes on to say, the young man took care of his instructions and all his obstructions were cleared. Life very often takes us through many such turbulent moments, times when things are not very easy to handle. In all such situations of our life, in all such moments of our struggle, our blessed God, the controller, the chief controller of our lives, tells us in a very stern and a strong voice, if you take care of my instructions, I will take care of your obstructions. The Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 10, verse 1 to 10, we have the incident of Jesus sending out his disciples on a mission. Jesus is very much aware that as the disciples are sent on a mission, they would encounter difficulties. He knew that they would face even rejections from the people to whom they were going to minister. And so Jesus gives them a warning. Luke chapter 10 verse 3, Jesus says, Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Jesus knew his disciples who were new in their ministry were going to face problems and difficulties probably just as lambs would be among wolves. But Jesus also gives them this assurance that if you are willing to take care of my instructions, all your difficulties can be sorted out. And so Jesus tells them, verse 4 onwards, carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals. He tells his disciples not to depend on the external things in their mission journey. Rather, very gently and confidently, the master invites his disciples to trust and depend on him completely. And we know, as we read the gospel, the disciples would do that. They would depend on the master, his words, and they would come back rejoicing that the people were able to accept their ministry. Each of us as Christians have a mission in life. Jesus sends forth each one of us as Christian missionaries into this world and we have a duty to be carried out. It could happen possibly that very often when we face the struggles and difficulties in living our Christian life, we may be like lambs among wolves. But the master assures to all of us, if we depend on him totally, if we are willing to trust in the words of our God, then even though we face difficulties, God will take care of each one of us. Yes, we have a duty to preach and give Christ to the world. Challenges will come our way. Turbulences will surely be encountered. But the master, the chief controller of our life tells us, if you are willing to listen to my instructions, then I 
will take care of your obstructions. Let today be a wonderful day when we give heed to this voice of the Lord, depend on Him totally and listen to the Master's instructions in carrying out our Christian mission. May the good Lord bless all of us with this grace to give heed to His voice and instruction and depend on the Lord totally. May the name of the Lord be ever praised. Live Jesus. Certainly, today's message has given you one or two thoughts to ponder over and reflect upon. Dear sisters and brothers, we are all ordinary people, but we are called to be holy. Saints were ordinary people like you and me. However, they became extraordinary by their extraordinary desire to lead a holy life. Lodovico Pavoni was born into a noble family in Brescia, Italy on 11 September 1794. He was a bright child and took a keen interest in the world around him. He was skilled at painting and hunting and was also good at horseback riding. Growing up privileged, he noticed the disparity between his upbringing and those of the peasants and began responding to the social problems of his time. Most likely, Educated at home or close to home, he then began his theological studies. But the advent of the Napoleonic era brought about the closing of the seminaries. This did not interrupt his studies since Father Carlo Ferrari, a Dominican, invited Lodovico into his home to continue his preparation for the priesthood. He was ordained to the priesthood in 1807. That same year, he opened the oratory that became a culmination of his lifelong concern for the shortcomings of the society and the challenges facing the youth of his time. In 1808, he received official permission to continue with the oratory. Pavoni was appointed as an assistant to Bishop Gabriel Nava in 1812 and was named as a church rector on 16th March 1818. He was assigned to the Church of St. Barnabas. In 1818, he received permission to found an orphanage and a vocational school that in 1821 would transform into the Institute of St. Barnabas. He decided that the first trade of this school would be in the field of book publishing. The publishing house of the Institute of St. Barnabas was thus established in 1823, an organization that is still in existence under the name of Angora Press. Through the years, he added many other trades – carpenters, silversmiths, blacksmiths, shoemakers, and tool and dye makers. In 1823, he also welcomed deaf mutes to the school, one of the very few educational institutes that did so at that time. A short time later, he purchased a farm and added an agricultural program to the school. Pavoni founded his own congregation of priests and brothers in 1825 known as the Sons of Mary Immaculate, commonly referred to as the Pavonians. On 8th December 1847, he and the first members of the congregation made their religious profession following diocesan approval and canonical erection from the Vice Capitula of the Diocese of Brescia, Messenger Luci. The cholera epidemic in 1836 prompted him to tend to its victims and take in more men. On 3rd June 1844, he was decorated with the title of Knight of the Iron Crown from the Emperor of Austria, Ferdinand I. On 24th March 1849, during the 10 days when Brescia rebelled against the Austrians and both sides were ready to pillage the city, Blessed Lodovico performed his last heroic act of charity when he led his boys to safety to the novitiate on the hill of Sino, 12 kilometers away. A week later, he died at the dawn of Palm Sunday, 1st April 1849, as Brescia was in flames. Let us pray. Dear St. Lodovico, throughout the history of the Church, the youth have been so vulnerable to temptation and so easily led away from God. 
help us to see the work that God wants us to do in saving these souls in bringing them into and back to the true church amen after listening to the life and the holiness of the saint let's also decide to lead a holy and saintly life dear brethren word of god is light and life for us it is the food for our soul so let's now get ready for today's spiritual food through daily bread praise the lord dear friends welcome to the daily bread now the lenten reflections we are meditating on the word of god the scriptural passages suggested by the liturgical calendar of the latin rite for each day during the lent let me read first from isaiah 65 verse 17 to 21 for behold i create new heavens and a new earth and the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind but be glad and rejoice forever in that which i create for behold i create jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy i will rejoice in jerusalem and be glad in my people no more shall be heard in it the sound of weeping and the cry of distress no more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days or an old man who does not fill out his days for the child shall die a hundred years old and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed they shall build houses and inhabit them they shall plant vineyards and eat their own fruit they shall not build and another inhabit they shall not plant and another eat for like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands this is the word of the lord praise the lord dear friends we see a lot of evil tragedies around the world and as days pass we are more and more concerned how evil the world has become so much of disaster man made and by by nature very often we are cast into despair is there any hope are we so corrupt is there no possibility of being redeemed there are many prophets of doom who prophesy the end is near the world is going to end at least the humanity is going to be exterminated extinct prophets of doom but this also happened in the old testament there are a lot of prophets who spoke about the end of the world but then after this prophecy came a new movement called the apocalyptic the apocalyptics are people who saw beyond the history and so god's intervention a powerful intervention into history this is not a creation of man's hand the peace the joy the new heaven and the new earth will be created by god that's what prophet isaiah in chapter 65 is telling behold i create new heavens and new earth god is creating beyond all this destruction beyond all this sinfulness and hatred and tragedies god is going to create everything new and this is a promise that this promise has been repeated in the last book of the bible the book of revelation and its last chapter 21 21:1 i saw a new heaven and a new earth all this will pass all the tragedies all the hatred the wars and destruction all will pass and in verse 5 it is said behold i make all things new renewal is god's work God is going to create everything new. A God who created everything out of nothing, he can also recreate. And he is recreating through his only son, Jesus. Jesus who came and manifested what God's love is by dying on the cross. And by dying on the cross he has given us life. He was exalted, he was lifted up on the cross and from there he has showered his grace. of love of understanding 
of union with God. And that's what in the gospel passage, chapter 4, John is presenting, the healing of the centurion's son. The healings of the centurion's son who was at the point of death. The centurion came asking for help and Jesus somehow criticized the lack of faith. But then the centurion was so adamant and he said, Lord, I believe. And then Jesus told him, okay, your servant shall live. And he lived. And the centurion came to understand exactly at what time the, his servant became well. That's when Jesus said he will live. So the life comes from God. The life is being renewed by God. And the Lent is a time to reflect on this renewal of God, to reflect and to accept God into our lives. Allow God to renew our hearts. The renewal doesn't come from outside. It should come from inside. It's my inner being that has to be changed. Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God like a salt. The salt that taste, makes the food tasty or the leaven that enleavens the, the whole dough is from inside, from person to person. If I experience God's love in my heart, I love my neighbor, and that person also comes to experience love. And so this renewal comes through the experience of love. I make everything new. And this is the time. This is the time to become aware of God's renewing spirit that is working in our hearts, in our society. Stop complaining about the tragedies and the hatred and all the evil that is in the world. It, of course, there is. But if you see the eyes of faith, you can see God's spirit at work, even in the midst of tragedies. On the cross, John saw the glorification of Jesus. The cross was the exalted. For the others, it was a, the crime, it was a tragedy. But the one who looked with faith saw the glorification, the exaltation, the manifestation of the supreme love of God. So let us close our eyes, enter into our inner beings, and become aware of the love of God, the spirit that is renewing us in our hearts. Let's conclude with a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this great promise that you will create everything new, that a new heaven and a new earth is not the vain dream of the lazy or the hopeless. This is a dream that you have put into our hearts, into our minds, and Jesus is the one who creates everything new. I said, behold, I make everything new. Renew us, Father. Renew our hearts. Renew our church. Renew our society. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Certainly, today's Daily Bread has given you new insights to follow in your spiritual journey. As we come to the end of today's episode of Daybreak, let's once again praise the Lord with this beautiful hymn.
My dear friends, I am sure the last half an hour has really been a blessing to you. Till we meet again, stay blessed.